In this video, we're going to practice naming ionic compounds and writing ionic compound formulas from ionic names. Um, but first, let's review quickly which compounds we actually give an ionic naming system to. So first, when you look at your formula, you've got to determine, is it a metal plus a nonmetal? So is it a metal or the ammonium ion plus a nonmetal? Or is it a metal or ammonium plus a polyatomic ion? If you can answer yes to this, then this is a we're going to use the ionic naming system. So the cation is the positively charged ion, and it comes first. Our anion is the negatively charged ion, and it is named second. Okay? So let's figure out whether how we're going to name the, um, the atom. So the, ion, the cation keeps its name. And remember, this is going to either be the metal or the ammonium ion. Okay? And it's going to keep its name. Now we're talking about the anion. The, um, no, we're still talking about the cation. If this cation has more than one charge, so if it's just singly charged, it keeps its name. When I say singly charged, meaning it only has one type of charge. It's a plus two, a plus one, a plus three, right? And it can't have another type of charge. We're going to keep its name. So down here we have potassium bromide, sodium nitrate. So potassium keeps its name, right? Because it's only a plus one charge for potassium. Okay, so it keeps its name. If it is a transition metal, and it can have more than one possible charge, these are the transition metals. So you have to really get into your periodic table and know what's what. If it's a transmit, transition metal, it probably has more than one charge, one type of charge, and we can use this naming system where we use our Roman numeral for the charge. So here for FeCl2, iron has a two plus charge. How do we know? Because chlorine has a minus one charge looking at the periodic table, okay? Because chlorine is in group 7A, it has a minus one charge. And we have two chlorine atoms. So since we have two of them, we know that we have two of those ions, which means that my iron must have a plus two charge, all right? The other older naming system that we're, I'm not necessarily going to test you on too much is either the ick or the us. And how do you remember the ick or the us? The ick is the one that has the highest charge, and the us is the one that has the lowest charge. So lowest charge, and this one is the highest charge. The ick is the highest charge and us is the lowest charge. All right? So, and then we know that for our, for our anion, we drop the ending and add I. So, our anion, you drop the ending of the, of the element name and add I. All right? Let's do some practice. Let's do the, I'm going to do the first one for you, and then you can pause the video and do the rest of them on your own, and I'll come back and give you the answers. All right, we've got calcium and oxygen. Well, I know that these are ionic compounds because that's what it says on the slide. However, check your periodic table. Calcium is in group two. 2A, where oxygen is in group 6A, and so it's going to have a negative 2 charge, while calcium is going to have 
a plus two charge. Oh, I've got two ions. I must be using the ionic naming system. So being that calcium is in group two, it's not a transition metal. I just use its name. And we have oxygen and it is a non-metal. We're just going to drop the ending and add I. Now, pause the video and practice the rest of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and name these other compounds. Okay, manganese is a transition metal and sulfur is found in group 6A. So it's gonna have a negative two charge. So that means two times three gives me a negative six. So in order for me to know what the charge is on manganese, these two have to cancel out. So manganese must have a plus three charge because two times three gives me plus three. I'm sorry, <laughs> plus six. So they'll cancel each other out. So now I know what the charge is on the manganese. And because it is a transition metal, manganese, I'm going to put my Roman numeral here. And because sulfur is a non-metal, I just Drop the ending, my writing, let me write that better. We just drop the ending and add I. All right, lithium oxide. Oh, I gave you the name before we even started. But lithium is found in group one. Oxygen is in group six. So oxygen we know has a plus two, lithium has a minus one. I mean, sorry, oxygen has a minus two, lithium has a plus one, and we need two of them. So here we have lithium oxide. All right, the next one we have magnesium, and we have bromine, right? So magnesium is in group two. It's not a transition metal. It keeps its name. And bromine is a non-metal. It's in group seven. So you drop the ending and add I. Brom, my. The last one. So maybe you've never seen CD before. So you've got to find it on your periodic table. And that is cadmium. When you find it, you'll notice that cadmium is a Transition metal. So how do we figure out what the charge is? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. I've got something here in parentheses. What is that thing? Well, if it's in parentheses, that means it's a polyatomic ion. And guess what? This is one of the ones that you need to know. Right? This is NO3. It's nitrate. NO2 is nitrite, so this is nitrate. And uh, if we go back to our chart, we'll see that this NO3 has a minus one charge. So if it's got a minus one, we've got two of them, then that must mean that cadmium has a plus two charge. So we're gonna say cadmium Cadmium to nitrate. The polyatomic ion keeps its name. Let's do one of the harder problems together. Um, we're going to do the reverse and do some, write the compound formula based off of the name. All right, let's do this one down here. Chromium 3 carbonate. Chromium 3 carbonate. Well, chromium three, if you see that Roman numeral, you should automatically know that tells me what the charge is on that um, element or that atom. And because it has this Roman numeral, 
we also know it's a transition metal. So we have to figure out how many ions of each type in order for us to write the proper formula. So first we're gonna write our chrome, chromium and we're gonna give it a three plus, right? Uh, and carbonate, carbonate, carbonate. Hmm, that's not an element. It's got a whole name to it, so that must mean that it's a polyatomic ion. So this is one of the ones that you need to memorize, but if you're not sure, you can go back to the table that had the names of the polyatomic ions on it so that you can get the formula. So what we'll find out is that carbonate is a CO3, two minus. Well, in order to make compounds, compounds have to be neutral with zero charge, net charge. Here, if I just put one chromium ion plus one carbonate ion, it's going to be a plus one compound, which is no, no. We can't have charge on a compound. So we've got to figure out how many of each. Well, there's an easy way to do that. If you take the superscripts from each ion, that gives you the subscript for the formula. So this formula would be CR2. Remember, you've got to put your pop, you have to put your parentheses around a polyatomic ion that you need more than one of. So we've got Cr2, CO3 is our compound. So you can pause the video now and try the rest of these on your own. And when you come back, we'll go over the answers together. Okay, potassium iodide. So you notice before we simply write down our ions first. So potassium is in group one, one, so it has a plus one charge. Iodide is in group seven, so it has a minus one charge. How am I getting that so simply? Well, the group numbers give you the charge, kind of. So groups one A through three A is a minus one, minus two, and minus three charge. Groups, sorry about that, plus one charges because we lose electrons. Groups five through seven A, the charge is gonna be equal to group number minus eight, right? So group five A is gonna be minus three. 6A minus two and 7A minus one, all right? So for groups 1A through 3A, the group number is the charge, positive charge. For groups 5A through 7A, it's gonna be group number minus eight to give you the charge. All right, so iodide is in group seven. It's got a minus one charge. Well, if I put one of each of these ions together, It'll be neutral, so that compound is Ki. Iron two oxide, we'll do it just like we did the previous one or the very first one we did together. Iron, if it says iron two, that means it's a two plus charge. If I look at oxide, it's in group 6A, so that means that it's gonna be a two minus charge. Notice that if we put one of each of these together, we get a neutral compound. So we're going to get FeO. Sodium nitrite. All right, well, sodium is a group 1A compound, so it's got a plus one. Nitrite, not nitrate, nitrite, you got to go back to your periodic tables, NO2 not periodic table, your polyatomic ion table, and you see that it's a minus one charge, we've got one of each of those, they both have the same opposite charge, so it's just Na, NO2. Our very last problem is nickel two sulfate. Nickel, notice we've got a Roman numeral, that means it's a transition metal, and nickel is Ni, 
uh, and it's got a two plus charge. And sulfate, if you haven't memorized it yet, go back to your polyatomic ion table. And it's got a, um, a two minus charge. So one of each of these together will give me a um, neutral compound. 